friends welcome to the fifth lecture in module 2. In this lecture we will continue to discuss about the complaint structures more in detail. As a summary we said that tension neck platforms which is one of the most successful complaint platform is designed in such a manner that its natural period are far away from the wave period. It has got two distinct bands of frequencies, one is highly flexible which is compliant degrees of freedom, they are essentially surge, sway and yaw out of which these two are displacements degrees of freedom and this is rotational degree of freedom. The other band of frequencies is very stiff which is very rigid, they are heave, roll and pitch, heave is a displacement degree of freedom and roll and pitch or rotational degrees of freedom. The typical periods at we discussed in the last lecture varies anywhere from 80 to 120 seconds in flexible degrees of freedom and this vary anywhere from 2 to 5 seconds in stiff degrees of freedom. Since platform has got an extreme combination of both flexible and stiff groups of degrees of freedom this platform is also called as hybrid platform. Then extending the discussion further the lateral forces acted upon by the waves or wind essentially displaces the platform along x and y axis as the case may be it also causes rotational displacement about x or y axis respectively as the case may be. So, due to the coupling effect this induces heave motion. It is very interesting friends to realize that forces are applied along x or y, but displacement happens along heave. This is actually a strong coupling effect. So, when we do an analysis of offshore platforms of this nature, we must take care of this concept in the analysis that there is an interdependency of degrees of freedom in the analysis. We must remember this when we do the analysis for tension lock platforms. So, set down causes change in water plane area which in turn affects or influences the buoyancy forces. Now, as a result the initial pre tension T 0 will now change that is why it is called dynamic tension variation. So, now the platform will move on the displaced position. So, when I have a platform which is initially T third to the seabed with initial pre tension of a very high value, when the platform displaces to the right as the tethers are inextensible the horizontal component of the tether and the vertical component of the tether. The horizontal component of the tether will counteract waves, the vertical component of the tether will add weight and it will improve stability. So, this is what we call as TLP mechanics and 
this offset this displacement is called offset and this displacement is called set down which is explained in this figure very clearly that how the offset and set down induces horizontal and vertical component of the forces and these forces are very large because T 0 initially is very high T 0 value is very high therefore, the horizontal and vertical component will counteract the waves and this will impose weight and improves stability. Having said this TLPs are seen as one of the most successful compliant platforms. One can very easily see here loads are resisted by displacements and essentially not only by the strength. So, strength may not govern the design of such platforms. So, we call this as form dominated design. So, the structural form or the geometric form of the platform is very important. It is conceived in such a manner that the displaced position forces counteract the lateral forces and induce a stability and recentering capability in the given system. Adding to one more point installing TLP at increased water depth is more challenging. It needs a high technical expertise. It is due to this reason one can say that TLPs are expensive when you go for higher or greater water depths okay, that is the reason why they are expensive because construction or installation of TLP at higher water depths needs high technical expertise which is expensive. So, this was reinforced by Chandrasekharan et al. in 2008, 2011, 2016, 2006. Further, it is also enforced by Donnelly and Spanos in 1991. The most advantageous feature of TLP can be seen as unlike other platforms or platform configurations, TLPs do not collapse. Like in case of Jacob Riggs, which capsizes, TLPs do not capsize. Then what happens to them? They remain afloat. they may not remain functional under extreme cases, but they will remain afloat because buoyancy exceeds the weight by design. So, that is why we said it is form dominated design. One demerit it has got is it has got a very high complicated maintenance of subsea systems, which also makes it expensive. So, there are many TLPs built across the world in different locations. For completion sake, this is one picture of Neptune TLP.
the other picture. So, many TLPs are constructed successfully. So, TLPs have shown advantages in terms of restricting or dispersing the lateral loads by large displacements. Alternatively, the next structural form which was chosen as an alternative to TLPs or spar platform. It consists of a single large diameter cylinder. This cylinder actually supports the deck. So, the deck is there and it is supported by a single large diameter cylinder. The cylinder is having a deep draft. It has deeper draft may be about close to 60 percent of its height is in water. Let us see if this is h, this is about approximately 0.66. Of course, this is governed by the design and type of the hull support system etcetera. So, essentially it is a deep draft system. The bottom chamber of the cylinder the bottom chamber is filled with denser material this is essentially done to lower the center of gravity of the system because top side hull has got lot of superimposed load to compromise and compensate that the bottom part of the chamber is filled with denser material. So, that the CG is lowered to improve stability. So, this was a concept which was verified by various studies conducted by Zhang et al 2007. Ran at all 1996, Agarwal and Jain 2002, and others. So, that is a typical structural form of a spar platform. Generally, spar platforms are connected to the seabed by spread mooring system. These are actually not taut moored, unlike TLPs. So, there is no initial pretension in this status, they are slack mode. There are three types of structural forms. of spar platform essentially classical spar truss spar and a cell spar so again one can say this is form dominated design because the top weight is balanced by buoyancy cost 
by the cylinder draft. Many spar platforms are constructed all over the world. In the recent past, the water depth where they are installed varies from 800 meters to as deep as 2377 meters. 2377 meter is the per dido spar commissioned in US waters. Alternatively, you have Devil's Tower, which is at the depth of 1710 meter, you have Horn Mountain, which is at the depth of 1653 meters, again both of them are commissioned in USA. 